Welcome to D23 2024. Hi everyone, how's life and welcome to another one of my videos. So yes, today D23 has officially started the weekend of D23 here in Anaheim, California. It's going to be my very first time attending this convention, this event, the biggest Disney fan event in the world. I've been wanting to come to D23 for so long now, I want to say at least a whole decade I've been wanting to come and I'm so excited to finally be here for one of the most exciting ones actually. This is the first time that they're doing part of the convention here at the Anaheim Convention Center and then the rest of it, the evening stuff, the big panels at the Honda Center. So I've heard it's going to be a very very big event this year of course with it being my first time there is going to be some things that i'm trying to learn and do for the first time for instance this morning we were at the convention center very early i would say quite early around 8 a.m we got here because the convention is meant to start at 9 a.m however the line was so so long that it took about an hour for us to actually get in i mean we've just gotten in we've collected our lanyards as well that's another thing that we learned we should have definitely done this before today especially as international guests you can't have these sent to you directly to your house whereas i believe if you're american you get sent these to your home so to collect these we had to go to the hilton they have a little convention area and it didn't take any time at all to be oh, fair it just was an extra thing that we had to do this morning which i would say is probably best to do you know before the day of the convention but we're learning it's still only it's just gone past 10 a.m so it's only been about one hour since the doors open this is the entrance they're currently playing one of my favorite songs from Encanto. And yeah, I'm going to show you as much as possible. I'm very excited. It's very hot outside, so let's get in. Oh, look at all the D23 signs. There's my bay, Woody. And then we've got, of course, Fantasia Mickey, the icon for D23. And then this big, giant Sorcerer Mickey hat, which has Swarovski jewels on it. It is so pretty. It glows in the sunshine. And obviously, loads of people want to take their photos with it. So make sure you check out my Instagram, because hopefully, I'll be able to get a photo with it as well. They do have notices everywhere to say that they will be filming today. So just to let all the guests know. And we are now getting closer and closer to this beautiful Mickey hat. Honestly, look at the details. It's so, so beautiful. Anyway, this is the official entrance. As you can see, there's a sign that says show floor queue. And we don't actually have any panels for today. We did sign up for many of them, but we only got one and it's for Saturday for tomorrow. So today we're just going to go and check out the show floors, see what it's all about. Obviously my first time here and I truly, truly cannot believe I'm here. Like I said, for years I've been dreaming about being here. So the fact that I'm actually seeing the convention center, Fantasia Mickey over there. And I'm so excited to go into Aircon too. So we've just entered and oh my god, I love all the characters welcoming us in. You've got Joy, Jesse, D23, the ultimate Disney fan event. And yeah, you've got of course some Star Wars characters here as well. This place is pretty big. And as I said, there's going to be a lot to explore. You can see some of the information here. I've already accepted that I'm obviously not going to be able to do everything, but I'm mainly just here for the vibes. I'm excited to just be here amongst a bunch of other Disney fans. And any extra thing that I get to experience, I'll just be happy. One could say I am jumping for joy. <laughs> And they do also have this huge map of the show floors. I think there's three different show floors. The biggest one is, is of course the first floor, which is where we're at. And I think the first place we want to go to, what was the name of the place we wanted to go to? Oh, the Imagineering behind the scenes, because apparently there's going to be a lot of Disneyland Paris stuff, which we're very excited to see, being Disneyland Paris. But also, I'm here with Moni, and her outfit is incredible, right? Can I just show the beautiful uh, skirt as well, Fantasia Mickey absolutely perfect for the event you look amazing <laughs> that's all right i'm so excited to see so many people's costumes and just oh it's amazing being here already so we are entering exhibit hall c and already it looks like there's a lot going on starting with the disney volunteers stand which we all love the disney volunteers big shout out to them it's so cool to see a stand here as well it looks like there's a iron what did you see ray ben glasses <laughs> <laughs> that is cute actually. Moni loves glasses a lot. That is really cool. One of them sold out, but they have a lot a bunch of other ones still. Moni's just gone to have a look at some of the Mickey slash Disney Ray Bands that they've got going on here. They are really cool to be fair. I don't even own a pair of regular Ray Bands, let alone Mickey ones, but look at this one. It says Minnie Mouse on the sides. This is a similar one just in black. Very nice. Really, really lovely. It's called Magical Mayhem, the range. We decided we're just gonna make a round have a look at what's happening on this show you know floor the first floor and then kind of just get our bearings if you know what i mean i'm hearing some loud noises this is at espn college football it takes off 24th of august of course there's loads of hondas here because of the honda center i'm guessing a big sponsor of the whole event as well now they have a national geographic booth here as well 
and all of these things you can just queue up and enter if you wish to obviously because there's quite a bit of a queue for this one i'm seeing a disney junior area oh we're getting to some exciting descendants yeah i mean i'm not the biggest i don't i don't really watch the descendants however i know loads of you probably are fans because it's quite a popular show and there's well, a whole photo opportunity here they're obviously advertising, I think, a new series of it. Oh, there's Disney on Broadway in the back. Oh my God, there's so much to see. And then there's Disney Junior over there. So Moni just spotted this area where you can, you know, spin the wheel and potentially win some prizes. Here we've got a shop with the Mickey Mouse, obviously, outline as the entrance. It looks to be mainly a lot of like Marvel stuff. They do seem to have a couple of keychains as well. Nothing too major. It's not one of the main shopping areas here. There seems to be some characters doing some meet and greets over there. We need a who is there. I think it's the Disney Junior um, booth, you would say. I'm just going to get a little bit closer so you can see. There's also a lot of Bluey. I've never watched a single Bluey episode, but I know that people love it. I've even heard adults watching it, which I think is so cute. And then there's also an aerial, I believe. I think you can also meet Bluey. So uh, Winnie the Pooh was there just now, but I'm pretty sure there's also a Bluey meet and greet. And I think it's quite popular. He's meeting every single day that the event is on. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh my God, look at these people's outfits. You look amazing. You look fantastic. Best I've seen today. Thank you. Carrying on. This looks to be quite a popular stand just based on the queue. And it's called the Ava Fest. Abbott Elementary presents Ava Fest. I presume it's some kind of game show or competition. This is the standby wait for one of the panels on the premiere stage. And I just asked one of the guests here and they said it's for the music of Marvel, which whilst I enjoy, Marvel music is not something that I'll be willing to wait this long for. And that seems to be the actual entrance for the premiere stage. You can actually see the schedule as well, very conveniently right outside of it. So yeah, as they told me, Music of Marvel Studios is from 11 to 12 uh, o'clock. 30 years of Toy Story, I'd quite like to do that. I did uh, sign myself up to try and get this panel. The Toy Story one is at uh, 1.30 to 2.30. I don't know, maybe I'll try and you know give it a shot and see if I might be able to get in. I don't know if it's gonna be possible or not, but I would quite like to see that one. There's also the Bringing the Worlds of Disney Animation to Life in Disney Parks, 3.45 to 5 p.m. So all of these panels we had signed up for because we were allowed to say what we were interested in. And unfortunately, even though we signed up to quite a lot, we each only got one panel guaranteed. So we are continuing our journey. There's a D23 Emporium in front of me I've spotted. And then here right next to me actually, here is where people that actually have reservations for the premiere stage, the panel happening soon are queuing for. So there's two separate queues obviously. Even if you do get a reservation, obviously you do have to queue. So it's nice and organized. And there's also a sign here that says reservation queue. <laughs> this is cute. Quite a lot of shops here, little shops. I saw a box lunch area too. They do a lot of really fun lounge lives, including Disney ones. We are gonna have a look at these a little bit later on, I think, but I thought I would quickly show you some things they have. These are cute keychains, different characters, not even specifically all Disney, they've got other characters. Oh my God, look at all the lounge flies. Wow, if you're a lounge fly fan, they've got plenty available here. Lounge flies and pop funkos are everywhere. <laughs> Like I said, if you are into that sort of thing and if you collect them especially, then this will be your heaven. They have some other backpacks here as well, non-lounge fly ones. I really like this uh, Peter Pan one. It's really nicely designed. So many different characters. There's Stitch down there. There's Daisy. There's a Lost one too, but you've already got that nice Lost. Oh, the Dumbo one's cute. Yes. Mm -hmm. They have quite a lot of small, like, shoulder bags here as well. Money found this that she quite liked. And it is really, really small. Oh, there's a Woody one. There's a Woody one too, and these, the sizes, we were chatting, uh, Moni and I, about how it's really convenient for our DJI pockets to put them in there. There's also like one with all the different characters here, and Stitch up there, Dumbo, quite a lot of, quite a lot of designs actually, and then you can see the prices up there. So we might get one, we're still considering it, we're just having a look. I do really like that Woody one though, <laughs> gotta shout out my bae. Oh, they've also got an alien one, Bruno, Buzz, Olaf. I also like this Mike Wazowski one, it's cute nice. because it's... Uh, round that one yeah it's very, yeah. it's very money yeah i agree <laughs> like this is more me yeah. that's more money <laughs> some more lounge flies here i really like this christmas one sparkly christmas one um yeah there's a lot going on here and also at the stage and mind booth there are some artists doing some artwork live 
which is pretty amazing to see. I love it. They do also have a schedule of all the different artists, special guests that we could find here at this particular booth. So today is the 9th Friday, August 10th tomorrow, and then 11th. And if there's a particular artist that you would like to get some signed stuff from, then you can come here. We have come to Hall C now because there's an Imagineering stand that apparently has a model of the new part of Disney Adventure World. Of course, Disneyland Paris being my home park, I want to try and focus on it as much as possible in these upcoming D23 vlogs. They do also have loads of places for you to sit down if you want to, grab a drink or some food. And then, yeah, loads and loads of shops and panels everywhere. So bear with me, we've just entered. We want to start with the Disneyland Paris stuff and then, yeah, we'll have a look at everything else hopefully in the next few days. This is amazing. So Maui's just chilling there. They've got a poster of Moana too, because that's coming out later this year. Huh? For the Imagineering. Oh, amazing. We thought the Imagineering uh, behind the scenes might have a queue to go in, but at the moment it looks like we can get in really easily, which is perfect. So yeah, it looks like we can just walk in. And from our understanding, this is where you can see some model, a lot of things, not just Disneyland Paris, but also Disneyland Paris's new model of Disney Adventure World, which we, I'm very excited about. This is what this area looks like. Oh, look at that for Tiana's Spy Your Adventure in Florida. Can't wait to ride that, hopefully very, very soon. And yeah, it looks like the model for they, Oh my God, it's just here. Fantastic. So there you go. This is the model of the entire park, actually. Currently called Walt Disney Studios Park. Very soon to be called Disney Adventure World. And you can see some of the concept art that I think I've already shared some of it with you on YouTube and on Instagram and Disney obviously has as well. But yeah, this is the model. It's so, so cool. I have to say, it makes me so happy to see quite a lot of people actually gathered around my home park, my home Disney park. And not everyone even realizes straight away that it's Disneyland Paris. I hear so many people be like, oh, is this Florida? Is this like, you know, Hong Kong? And Disneyland Paris. So this is obviously the entrance of Disney Adventure World. You can see the Eiffel Tower is still there but the sign in front of it is now changing to the Adventure World, which obviously makes sense because that's a new name for the park once Frozen Land, World of Frozen opens. And then you can see we'll be going through there. You've got the Fantasia Mickey hat still. You've got Tower of Terror, which my friend Moni made a really good point. It doesn't have the Tower of Terror sign on it, which I don't want to start any rumors, but could it mean that they're going to change Tower of Terror to something else? Could they could possibly eventually change it to Marvel like they have in Disneyland California? I'm not sure. Ooh. I love how the parachute jobs are like literally hanging up. And then you've got RC Racer. So much new stuff coming though. You can see how much bigger it's gonna look once Disney Adventure World turns into Disney Adventure World. And we're no longer gonna have Walt Disney Studios. And there you go again. Imagineering behind the scenes. Advent oh, that's the logo again. This is all so, so exciting. Yeah, this is, this is uh, Walt Disney Studios, the second gate of Disneyland Park. It's, it's my home park, that's why. Yeah. This is nice. This is nice. Have you ever been? No, you no. should go, you should go when they change it to the new because they're changing the name now it's called Walt Disney Studios they're changing it to Disney Adventure World ah. and they're gonna have the Frozen Land open next year and a bunch of other things so I think that's why they put the model to showcase everything that's coming that's new. Yeah. I know it's we're very excited because we don't often get a lot. I'll be honest. Yeah, Disneyland Paris no. normally gets neglected, I mean, so exactly. And we're finally getting like quite a, quite a big expansion this coming. Is good. Yeah, this we're is good. good. Yeah. Are you are you local here, California? Yes. Cool. I love your park. You've got an amazing <laughs> park. <laughs> this is the other side of the model. Of course, you can see the very popular cars attraction over here. But then this big lake that's coming. Look at that. And then. Here's another angle of World of Frozen coming very soon. Make sure you have your trips booked because that will be coming very soon. The lovely cast member working next to the model, Lewis, his name was, uh, gave us these cute stickers. It says dreamer and doer, so adorable. But yeah, this is amazing. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, by the way, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be putting a reel up all about this very, very soon. So there you go, the transformation of Disney Adventure World. We literally just spent about 15, 20 minutes around this area, filming the model as much as we can. So like I said, all the content coming as soon as possible on Instagram and hopefully on YouTube very soon as well. But we also chatted to a bunch of people and that's been really cool too. So many people obviously have not been to Disneyland Paris yet. Somebody actually said they're going in May of 2025. So it's been amazing. It's been so nice chatting about obviously our home park, my favorite park, Disneyland Paris to a bunch of people who also love Disney but who may not have been to Paris yet. Anyway, moving on from Disneyland Paris, there are also a lot of other things coming to Disney, including this haunted mansion, what is it, parlor for the Disney treasure, the new ship that's gonna be premiering, I believe at the end of this year, 2024. They do also have some new concept art of the rooms in the Disney Destiny, another one of the ships coming to the Disney Cruise Line. 
uh, family, you could say. But yeah, Disney Cruise Line has become so, so popular recently. So many new ships coming. One sailing from Singapore, I believe, at the end of next year. So, so exciting. I actually can't wait to go on a few more cruises, hopefully, Disney Cruises in the next few years. That would be lovely. Look at some of these artworks, actually, for the Disney Destiny. So there's an Aladdin artwork over there. You've got some of the tile works there. It looks beautiful. And of course, the sculpturer as well, Robert and Lena, the concept design. This is amazing. Let me know in the comments down below, are you excited for the Disney Destiny? And then here they've got an artistic inspiration story living by Disney, which is cool. A little video about how concept arts are made, how they, you know, everything starts from scratch. Just buy some artwork, which is incredible. Anyway, carrying on, they have these screens here showing all the new things coming to Disney, actually. Well, not all of them, but we're going to get some announcements soon in the next few days. But some of the ships they're showing here. Some of the new attractions, some of the shows as well. Oh, this is cool. I love how they've called this location Infoneering, basically the info desk, but because it's Imagineering. Infoneering. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. This seems to be all about Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which has recently opened in Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom, but it will be coming to California very soon too, from my understanding. So it says themed finishes, sculpting a story. And wow, you've got live artists actually doing some sculpting, which is amazing. And you can see the names of the artists as well. So Asha on the concept design, um, uh, the dimensional design, and then Joseph production design. This is honestly so cool to see. So there you go. You can see some of the costuming for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, I believe. Very, very cool. So many little details, so many different material used, textures, etc. Fabrics, wow, this is incredible. And you can see again the concept art of the incredible Tiana animatronic, which again I haven't checked it out yet at the time of filming in August of 2024, but hopefully very, very soon I will be able to check it out in Magic Kingdom. So make sure to stay tuned to my channel. They also have a video here showcasing how Tiana's Bike Adventure was designed. Again, it's all about the little details, like so many tiny details to make an attraction that a lot of people won't even pay too much attention to the little details of but if you're a big Disney fan then you want to know exactly how everything came to life and obviously one of the main reasons we all love Disney is because of the attention to detail that they have. It's the saying playing with scale and finding the perfect beignet to bake I mean make. <laughs> I love that and yeah again so much details everywhere employ your own Tiana's foods. I'm honestly so excited to go on this attraction soon, hopefully again. I would love to hear your thoughts down below if you've already been on it. What do you think? Is it an upgrade to Splash Mountain? I mean, I love Tiana as a character. I love her movie, so I think it's going to be amazing, personally. And oh my God, Fantasy Springs. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I've been. Have you yeah, been? I was a couple of months ago. It was so cool. I want to go, but I want to like live there. So there you go. You can see all the details. Uh, Danielle created producing the magical waters of Fantasy Springs. And I love the waters. The springs are incredible. Bring more classic Disney tales into the world of Tokyo Disney Sea. And Honestly, guys, I cannot wait to go back to Tokyo Disney. I have made it my mission, and I'm just going to tell you here this here. I have made it my goal and my hope to try and get to Tokyo Disney at least once a year. Now, whether or not this happens, I can't guarantee it, but it is definitely something that I would like to hope to do, or at least try to do for the next few years. This is the Tinkerbell's buggy ride, I believe. Very cute to see. There you go. Design model for Fairy Tinkerbell's busy buggies at Tokyo Disney Sea. Oh what I would give to go back there. I mean, I love being in Disney California, don't get me wrong, but Tokyo Disney Sea and being there for the opening of the Fancy Springs was honestly such an incredible core memory for me. Also, shout out to the cast member that gave me another one of these stickers, Future Imagineer. I wish. I don't think I'm going to be a future Imagineer, but I'm going to be a future Imagineer appreciator. I can guarantee that. I'm a current Imagineer appreciator. And there you go, some photos of Rapunzel and how they built that attraction sample brass front piece used as benchmark in selection process wow they think of every little detail it is it i just wow is all i can say the next room seems to be all about audio animatronics it says bringing characters to life and we all love a good audio animatronic right here we've got expressive characters box droids and there is a box droid literally on the ground saying hello to people oh my god yeah <laughs> the dog is so confused bless her or her this is so cute. <laughs> so we've got an animatronic of Elsa here as a head. And please just enjoy the details. She's even got freckles on her face. The way she moves her eyes, the mouth, the way she blinks. Honestly, I can't believe how far animatronics have come. Oh, and that's Shanghai's as well. So cool. 
I'm, I honestly cannot wait for all the person to come to Disneyland Paris because the animatronics used that I saw in Hong Kong Disneyland, it's going to be the same ones that we get. They are phenomenal. Obviously right now we're just seeing her head, but... Oh, she's singing as well. Cute. And you can see how the arms move here as well. Like the bare arms, the actual animatronics, the skeletons of it, you would say. Honestly, I'm a huge audio animatronics fan. I love any attraction that uses even the simplest form of audio animatronics. So to be able to see these in so much detail and up close, especially this Elsa here, and it just makes me so much more excited for World of Frozen. This is the emerging technology volatile is what it's called. I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but it looks really, really interesting. Hello! Aww. So nice to meet you! Oh my god, you're so cute! <laughs> oh, look at you! <laughs> You're adorable. You're adorable. Yes, of course. Legit? Yeah, I need to go. Okay. <laughs> so this is for a POV journey of water inspired by Moana in Epcot, which I have been lucky to experience once. Um, someone's just doing it. Oh, this is kind of the behind the scenes of how I need to do it with both hands, like that. Thank you so much, thank you. That was pretty cool. I can't believe it's nearly midday, it's nearly 12 o'clock and there's so much more to explore, but I just love Disney and especially Imagineering and the behind the scenes of the theme parks and how the rides are built so much that I could spend my whole day just in this area. In that scene, right, you have the sun that's singing the bass line, the dapper dogs on their bicycle, and the Chewy got the ultimate compliment, I think, from any of our first resorts when he became a popcorn bucket. What you guys would have just seen was the last bit of a presentation about some of the concept work and how it goes from blue skies to actual attractions and they gave an example of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Wayward as well and the little bird that has become so popular amongst Disney park fans. Anyway, let's carry on. Here we've got some environmental designs for Lookout Key, which is the new private island for Disney in the Bahamas, I believe one of the new stops of the Disney cruise ships. I would love to visit even Castaway Key I've not been to yet. So any of the, <laughs> you know, Disney private islands, I would be really glad to visit one day. And then this section seems to be very popular and of interest. This is the costume development, Disney Life Entertainment. And you can see some of the costuming for, I'm guessing some of the Halloween stuff coming up actually, because it's August and they celebrate Halloween quite early on in the US parks. So you can see the Fab Five there. I mean, well, there's Pluto, Chippendale, Mickey and Minnie, their outfits, the concept designs, there's Mickey, the skeleton outfit. You can see some of the actual materials here as well that are used. Oh, look at the gloves as well. There's mini gloves in there. I presume these are all the new costumes for this year's Halloween season in Disneyland specifically, and the Oogie Boogie Bash party as well. Oh, wow, is that one of the Isis Small World dolls? It definitely looks bigger than you kind of imagine them to be obviously when you're so up close to them they're quite big when you're in the ride and you see so many of them they look a little bit smaller and not quite as tall and yeah this is another look at i believe maybe minnie's outfit and you can see the shoes as well so so cool the costume design here oh wow there's donald's hat over there as well very sparkly thank you so much this is so cool oh wow it's, a, it's really light actually you expect it to be a little bit, I don't know, heavier? This is very, very sparkly. Oh, sorry, that just fell. <laughs> Thank you. I just got to hold Donald Duck's hat. My life has peaked. And then here it says illusion development and special effects. So for a lot of the more thrilling rides, I would say like Hyperspace Mountain in Disneyland Paris, maybe Guardians of the Galaxy, things like that. Oh, there's a Coke in there. What does it say? Bartender drink illusion mock-up. That's fun. And then here it says proof of concept for vibrating magical uh, fiber optics, uh, animated water characters, holographic like projection. There's a lot of cool things. Again, all about the details. Like so many of these little things happen so quickly when you're on a ride as well that you don't even really fully take it in. But it makes the experience what it is and that's the magic of Disney really. So the next showing of the presentation should be starting in about 41 seconds. And I have a feeling this one's gonna be about fancy spring. So I'm gonna check out some of it and see what it's like. Oh, it's starting. This is a cool painting set probably the same way where the homie is painting a shoe. Uh, and I'll I'll start with a shoe. shoe. It started with a shoe for me, yes. So 
I painted that shoe to the best of my ability, and I was so proud of it. And it was proudly displayed behind a whole stack of hats in the Mad Hatter wheel. We had such a great kind of director and setting the vision that we wanted to capture that most optimistic, best version of Tutorial. Anyway, I have finally left the Imagineering uh, booth slash space area. There was a lot going on in there and I'll probably check it out again in the next few days. But there is obviously a lot more to do here as well. So we're going to check out the rest of this uh, room, I think. Oh, look at that Pixar ball over there. That's fun. There's also a full-on photo location here with Jesse, Bullseye, all the Pixar balls. You've got Woody here, my bae. Howdy, partner. And then Pixar Animations. Oh my God, Pixar Animation Studios. What a dream. My favorite animation company is Pixar. Buzz is looking incredible. We've got uh, the Dynamite Lil Bice here as well. Disney Pixar win or lose coming soon to Disney Plus. Exciting. So many fun photo opportunities. There's the unicorn over there. This inside out one is very popular. There's even a little bit of a queue actually just for the photo here with uh, anxiety and joy from inside out too. Oh my God, Elio as well. Elio, the new Pixar film coming in summer of 2025. They've got a full on backdrop of it here, a poster. I don't know too much about this film yet, but I'm looking forward to it. It looks pretty cool and hopefully it will be another success for the Pixar company. Looks like there's a live animation slash drawing performance happening right now here as well. Very cool. Just met a lovely viewer, Brooke, in the queue for the cruise line booth, which Moni has joined it. I'm gonna quickly go to the uh, Toy Story, the main stage basically, where they're going to be having a Toy Story panel, 30th of Toy Story. I very much doubt I'm going to be able to get in, but I want to give it a shot. I want to just go and see what the standby line looks like, if it's at all possible for me to be able to get in, because obviously I didn't get a reserved spot for it, even though I did say that I really wanted. I didn't get lucky with that particular panel at all. I only got one panel. We both got one panel each. and. To be honest, from what I've heard, some people didn't get any panels, like they got zero panels, which I think is ridiculous. Some people got two panels and two is the maximum amount that, oh, <laughs> this is so funny. I'm sorry. You're going to see me like get excited constantly. Look at this. They've got the cars from, I think this was out for Pixar Fest not so long ago, actually, here in Disneyland. The bus car and the Woody car with the, you know, Flo's Cafe and the Cars Land backdrop some Star Wars, but there's so many photo opportunities. But the thing is, even the photo opportunities have queues, some of them. There's a Lounge Fly Studios booth over here and some online exclusive figures are coming soon as well. They have a Ravensburger booth, Locarno. I know Locarno is very, very popular these days with a lot of Disney fans and actually non-Disney fans seem to like it too because it's a card game. Avatar has a full-on booth over here and of course, quite a popular one again, looks to have quite a bit of a queue. Look at this though, this is pretty cool. Hopefully we'll be able to check it out maybe tomorrow or the day after because again with the queues it does take a little bit of time to actually be able to see the things but I do enjoy Avatar. The second movie especially was really good. Disney on Broadway which feels very close to home actually for me. I absolutely love theatre of course and Disney and this is The Lion King. They've got posters of it and I'm so lucky to live in London where obviously the West End is there and so many theatre shows are there including a lot of really cool Disney ones, look at that, Samantha Barks making an appearance here. And it's great, they actually have a schedule with different performances and events happening. Demonstrations, Scar Mask demonstration at 1 p.m., Sven character transformation. Um, there's a theatre magic with Michael James Scott as well, who played the genie. Oh, this is really cool. They had, there's honestly a lot going on. I was worried that, you know, by not getting any panels really apart from one for tomorrow, there wouldn't be enough to do apart from shopping and even though I obviously enjoy my Disney merch it's not the main reason I've come to D23 obviously and I'm really happy that already even just within the couple of hours of being here I feel like I've achieved and done so much I've seen so many cool things I've talked to so many cool cast members Imagineers I've seen costumes I've seen a lot it's been amazing like oh it's exceeded my expectations already and I hope it continues this way. So this is the Disney Plus booth, which is another very popular one. And then we're getting closer and closer to the premiere stage where the Toy Story panel should be starting soon. I really doubt I'm going to be able to get in. I just wanted to see it and see how big the queue is right now. So this over there is the line for people who have reservations for the Toy Story panel happening soon. And then this on my right is the standby queue. Doesn't look too, too bad. However, I've not actually been inside this panel yet. Obviously, it's my first time here. I'm not sure how big it is, how much space it's gonna have, how many people from the standby queue they're gonna actually let in. Excuse me, hello. Oh, thank you so much, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, people are waiting for the Toy Story one. Is this, is that correct? In about an hour? 
Uh, yeah, but you know there is a long line right now. So here's the here's the catch. Reserve people, it's at least two thousand two hundred. Okay. There's three thousand seats. Okay. So there's only a thousand left over. And and from what you can you see, you don't know if this is the thousand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so only a thousand standby wait areas available. Like, yeah, that's only available. Yep. I'm trying to figure out if this is a thousand or not. I can't exactly. do that. So I honestly, I would wait in line. You would say just, just do it. Okay. Just to see if you get it. Okay. And then, I mean, Toy Story. That's a really. Good I one. love Toy Story. I, I It was one of the. It's one of my like picks. I didn't manage to get it. Yeah, yeah. So the Toy Story, Marvel is always the big one. And then the next. One. The park panel. The it's a that's um, uh, the parks. yeah that's also one that I would love. The so is a good one too. Okay, okay. That cast member was so so lovely, and I don't know why I feel emotional because I feel like there might now be a chance to actually attend this. They gave me hope. Obviously, no guarantees. I don't know if you guys heard it or not, but there's about two thousand reserved people, and she said about a thousand people from the standby way will be able to go in. I can't quite tell if this is a thousand people. I don't think it is. So. I'm going to chance it. Moni is in the cruise line queue and I was going to potentially join her if I decided not to do this. However, I think I'm just going to, I have to, as somebody who loves Toy Story, I can't, you know, be happy with myself without having at least tried to get in, right? So it says here to check in to your premier stage reservation, which obviously I don't have. It says scan your thing, but I don't have that. Oh, there's Esmeralda. I love your outfit. You look amazing. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, I've been getting quite a lot of compliments on my ears. These are from Tokyo Disney. And I really like the color of them. They're very sparkly, they're blue. And they don't have a bow. I mean, they had one with the bow as well. I particularly went for, I specifically, deliberately, I should say, went for the ones without the bow because I think they're a bit more unique than the ones that have the bow in. In case you guys are wondering, it's currently 12.31 uh, in the afternoon slash noon. And I believe this panel, the Toy Story panel, should be starting at 1.30. So just about an hour to wait. I also like how there's literally a Rex, a dinosaur waiting in line with us. Brilliant. And the queue is already moving. We've only got about 40 minutes now until the panel should be starting. Okay, let's go. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. So, we're in the last bit of the queuing. Hi, how are you? Um, I think I'm going to make it. I'm excited. That's where I was when I first joined the queue about half an hour or so ago. Now I'm getting closer and closer to the arena. Not arena. Um, the stage, that's it, the premiere stage, where they're having the panel for Toy Story 30. Ah, oh, I am so excited. Have you seen the smile on my face? I've not, even, I've not stopped smiling since we entered this convention center. Look at the amount of people here though, and this is just one of the panels. There are so many Disney fans here at D23, and I love it. This is one thing I love about this place already. The fact that I'm surrounded by so many Disney loving people and like so many of them. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm officially in. My very first D23 panel. This is amazing and really quite big actually. Do I go that way? Just go straight. Okay. Thank you so much. Wow. I just think it's so apt that my very first panel is going to be a Toy Story one. I'm when I missed out on getting it as a reservation, like a guaranteed reservation, I genuinely didn't think I'd be able to make it. Thank you so much. Just over there. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Where would you like me to? Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, it's currently about 15 minutes past 13, 1 p.m. The panel should be starting in the next 10 minutes or so. I'm excited. Let's see what they say. I'm just. I want to learn as much as possible about Toy Story. I obviously love the film, I love the characters, I love Woody, so I'll be excited and happy whatever they do about the 30 years of Toy Story. Come in, Star Command. Do you read me? Hello? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. oh my god. Yeah. We have the jackpot, we'll die. days of Pixar, we really wanted to prove that you could tell stories completely different in animation. The idea that we could do the world of toys, seeing things from the toys point of view for a while was really
And you can see through the glass, and everyone in there is completely frozen. Yes. <laughs> we, we forgot to, I think probably because in the tool that we used to animate, you couldn't see through stuff. That's right. So that big glass looked like cement, you know, so we didn't bother to animate it, but nobody noticed. Really? Even the shot we were watching in the clip reel the, where he says, you are a sad, strange little man, you have my feet. <laughs> if you look at his helmet, reflected in his helmet is, is, is Woody, but Woody is just frozen in one pose. <laughs> like that, the whole time. Yeah. Because... Eventually, something does show, and for us it was not just the Army Man sequence, but I think it was the Buzz Lightyear meeting Woody moment, or yeah. under the truck moment probably. Yeah. And there's enough land that suddenly everybody that's been you think has been against you or not behind you gets sees it. Mm -hmm. And then all you get you get like all this wind behind your sails and you get this all right, we'll keep rowing. This whole other army of people mm -hmm. that, that helping you that you just only because they just didn't see it either. By then I was writing full on, Joss had left, mm -hmm. and it sounds crazy, but we'd never talked out loud about what this movie was about. Mm -hmm. And we all just intuitively got it because you get it when you're like two or, f or five, like suddenly you have a new brother, a new sister, and you're jealous and you want to place it. Suddenly there's a new kid and you were the popular kid and suddenly you're not. Like nobody needed to go into psychoanalysis or, you know, young or any of this stuff to like figure out what we were talking about. So it all was very honest and natural, but suddenly we had to have our characters talk about it. And I remember like screaming just in frustration with all of us, like I, my and memories like Joe and John and you around my, and my shoulders, like just going, what are we trying to have him say? <laughs> and then finally, it just was, and it's to me, it's always been my North Star about how simple can I find it again with another character where they don't just, they don't go a monologue, there's not an I want song, they don't mm -hmm. say all this stuff, it's not, it's not self-aware of the audience. It's a character just saying in their own limited way of understanding the world the way they really mm. being vulnerable. He just said, I'm the one that should be strapped, strapped to that rocket. Mm. Woody said that. And that was his way of saying, I've always been insecure. I've always not. Mm. When we finally had that line, I was like, I get it. Now everybody out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it. But that was like the last thing to like yeah. really get solidified. I don't even have words for it, to be honest, because I'm just so proud to be part of it. And uh, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened. That means everything. Thank you. Woo! Well, I'm out of my very first panel. That was really interesting, actually, and very heartwarming because it was a group of people, you know, watching the panel who are all obviously Toy Story fans. And then to be able to listen to the creators, so the people that have actually worked on Toy Story from the beginning, you know, the original Toy Story, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Honestly, I loved it as a child and I still love it to this day. It's one of my comfort Pixar movies, just Disney movies, any film. I love Toy Story and it was really, really interesting. And one thing that the creators said as well, one of the creators when they went on stage was, how many of you watched Toy Story when it was first released in the cinema? And obviously I put my hand up because I watched it as a child. And then they said, how many of you were not even born when the first Toy Story movie was released? And again, some people put their hands up, which I think is so cool because it just shows that Toy Story is universal. People loved it when it was first released. People love it now. Young people love it. Adults love it. And it's going to continue. The franchise is going to continue. And I, I'm all for it. I think they should continue making movies with Toy Story characters in it. Anyway, I'm going to check out the Disney Plus booth now. Moni's actually already in queue for us. I'm trying to figure out where the queue is. Oh, yeah, there you go. Perfect. On the camera. You just scan the back of your badge. There you go. Uh -huh. All right. Next page, the confetti's gonna pop. Oh, up. thank you so much. Thank you. Yours. That's so cute. Thank you. So we just got given a Disney Plus pin. And with this lanyard, you can go and collect a few different pins from the two few different stations that they have around D23. Also, here we've got Bluey characters. I know Bluey is the blue one, but um, I'm not sure of the name of the other one. I feel like, I, feel like I haven't. No. What, what about the other one? I think it's Louie. I've oh, Louie. Actually... Okay, Bluey and Louie. You love this film uh, show, don't you? <laughs> Neither of us have watched it, to be fair, but we know it's very, very popular. So we thought we would show you the line here. You can meet them at the Disney Plus area. There is a bit of a wait line, but it's standby. So if we really wanted to, we could come back and meet them later on. Maybe I will. So we just collected our Disney Plus hats as well, which apparently they glow in the dark. And this is available to anybody who's a gold member, a D23 gold member, which both Moni and I are. She's just doing her vlog. So yeah, really, really cool. We get so many freebies actually at this event. So if you are coming to D23, make sure you have something with you to carry them, but also make sure you have luggage space to take these back to the UK or Europe, wherever you live, because 
you get a lot of goodies. Are you happy with your hat? Yes, I love it. Yes, yeah, it's cute. In the dark. It glows in the dark. It, we have a pin. We have. Also, you got a bag from volunteers. Can I show it to them? Yes. Let me find it. So whilst I was in the Toy Story panel, Molly did a couple of fun things, and she also managed to get a free. A Disney Volunteers bag. And it has G23 as well on the side. Oh yeah, and 2024 is... This is cute, this is cute. I also had to show you this. Look at that. I think this is just a couple of... Yes, you have cosplayed as... This is phenomenal. Oh, this is a, this is for me so far the best thing I've seen so far. And there's been some amazing outfits, but this wins it for me. <laughs> As a huge Toy Story fan, I just can't. How long did it take you to make them? Really? They look amazing. So cool. Well done. It's been around an hour or so since I last spoke to you. If you hear some noises uh, in the background, it's because Simple Plan are currently on stage. Simple Plan! I mean, I can't believe it. I never expected them to be casually just singing at a, at a D23 event. Got to watch some of them. They were really, really cool and got some photos as well if you want to check out my instagram feel free to do so i'm really tired not gonna lie and we have the whole evening at the honda center with the big presentations about the movies tonight i believe but i thought i would come and check out the cake worthy shop as well so if you've been watching my channel for quite some time you will know that i'm a huge cake worthy fan i do have an affiliate link code as well down below if you guys want to check it out supports the channel and i love their t-shirts i love everything they do in fact they do these um like shirts you could call them that have these backdrops and then so my all over printed shirts that you see me wear in my Disney videos and in my Instagram photos, you can get them at Cakeworthy. So if you want to use my discount code, like I said, the link is down below and you will get a discount. I will get something as well. So if you're a big fan of all over printed t-shirts as well, and if you just like, you know, cute Disney merchandise outfits, then check out Cakeworthy. Also, they have some exclusive stuff here. So convention exclusives, this Mickey comic one, which is really cool. They've got a tote bag as well some of these hats these aren't exclusive though i have seen them before and then for instance my uh the disney princess t-shirt that i wear in a lot of my videos you can actually get from cake worthy i get asked these questions so often and i always have my link in the description of my video so if you want to like i said check out what they have and they sell out quickly so if there's a design that you really want get it as soon as you can because otherwise you might not get a chance to get it again it is now 20 minutes past 4 pm though in about an hour's time we do have to start making our way to the honda center because that's where all the big panels will be happening this evening and and Moni ate lunch, quite a late lunch actually, whilst I was waiting for the Toy Story panel. I haven't eaten anything yet, so I'm really hungry. So I've come, I've ventured out. Moni's just uh, gotten us a table indoors. I'm going to see what I can find here. I'm going to get her a drink too. Looks like they've got a Mexican place here. Chicken Tinga Taquitos. Smells really good. And I think this is where uh, Moni said she wanted her drink from. There was like a red drink that she saw in a photo. So we'll be coming here. Thankfully, it doesn't look like there's a queue. Moni had to wait 40 minutes for her burger whilst that was in line for Toy Story. I mean, this is the thing that I knew before coming here but also it's definitely been solidified to me since coming to D23 even though the full day hasn't even finished yet you have to expect lines and you have to be prepared to wait in lines there's no other way around it you'll be waiting in line no matter what whether it's for food for merchandise for you know characters there's going to be lines so just be prepared I thought I'd quickly show you the prices as well so for the cheese quesadilla is $13 for the quesadilla $16 so prices are quite expensive for what you get but again it's to be expected you're at a convention here a popular convention at that i think i'm going to get my food from this chicken place they do classic waffle fries cheesy waffle fries and then a classic chicken sandwich which looks pretty good 16 dollars though <laughs> oh, or a korean fried chicken or national chicken sandwich so yeah that's what we're going to get and then i did get the red drink for money it's a watermelon drink to be fair i would quite like one of these as well i like watermelon so this is my chicken burger comes with some coleslaw, it's fried chicken, some pickles and then a side of cheesy waffle fries. They look pretty good as well. Um, sadly they didn't have any mayonnaise though, which as you guys know 
makes me very very sad but we're just gonna have to deal with it as it is they had ketchup and mustard so money had managed to get us a virtual queue for one of the shops the marketplace which is one of the most popular shops here and we just got called she got it at 1 p.m. basically you can either get it at 4 a.m. or 1 p.m. bless her she tried at 4 a.m. wasn't successful but 1 p.m. she managed and even though we've only got about 45 minutes or so before we need to leave for the Honda Thankfully, luck was on our side and we got called just in time. So we're going to go and check out some of the merch, exclusive D23 merch for this year. And this convention center is huge. We've been fast walking to get to this shop, but it's literally on the other side of the building by the looks of it. So yeah, a lot of space here. So much going on on all three floors as well. Obviously the main floor is the one that we explored, floor showcase one. But as well as queuing a lot, you should also be expecting to probably walk quite a bit because it's a huge space. And if you especially want to go to different, you know, different panels, different areas, different booths, you're going to be walking quite a lot. There you go. World of Disney. The product experience. I love the vibe of this place. Doesn't look as busy as it could be because even when your name gets called in the virtual queue, you still have to come and do a little bit of queuing to physically get into the area, the shop. Yeah, the queue is still pretty long. <laughs> I also really like all the cosplay costumes. There's Star Wars stuff going on in this room too. We've got a whole Marvel shop by the looks of it, like a Marvel uh, photo opportunity. And oh my God, this queue keeps going. We might not make it. Wish us luck, guys. Wish us luck. Money really wants to get a particular spirit jersey. Hello there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So also Where a money. Right, uh, yeah. Let's go right. Let's go right. Let's go right. Toad hall in the middle. Right. Haunted mansion stuff. By the looks of it, haunted mansion. Fifty-five years of happy haunts. Um, to my right, they look. They seem to have some dolls. Oh wow, some limited edition dolls, I believe. The Tremaine sisters over here. Yeah. Very nice. Is this meant to be Aladdin and Jasmine? Yes, Aladdin and Jasmine. That looks really beautiful as well. Oh, that's so funny, money. Look, they've got this Disneyland Paris range. We don't, need that. we don't need that at all. All the things we can find in Disneyland Paris, they have got it here for people that can't access Disneyland Paris, including the lounge fly. So we don't need that, obviously. Um, Mary Poppins. Oh yeah, Mary Poppins 60th anniversary. I do need to go and show that actually because my friend Rebecca loves, loves, loves Mary Poppins. They've got these Mary Poppins ears, which are adorable, with the penguin as a little enamel pin type in the middle. Some penguin plushes. They've got a Mary Poppins doll over there with um, an ornament, a figurine as well. Some more plushes. I really like what they've done with the display here. I have this large fly bag, by the way, really like it. Great color. And then they've put um, a plush in there. They have some Disneyland stuff. Disneyland 70th, oh! Because obviously Disneyland California is celebrating its 70th anniversary next year and they have already released some merchandise for it. Oh, wow. Is that meant to be a limited edition pin? <gasps> Look how big this is, this is huge. Price by $64. I really want to come back to Disneyland next year at some point for the 70th, so maybe I should get some kind of merchandise here. I'm not sure. Perhaps these magnets. I mean, the pin is definitely tempting, but the magnet price wise is probably more something that I might go for. Limit to one per person, by the way. And they have also got a spirit jersey. And on the front, it's really nice. 70th Disneyland. I just wish it wasn't like such a light color because it gets dirty quickly but it is a very nice spirit jersey. Some more Disneyland 70th anniversary stuff. And then what have we got here? This is a big, big marketplace shopping area, by the way. Oh, wow, I like these. These are some shirts, artist showcase. They've got some of the different attractions of Disneyland on them. They've got these pins, limited edition pins. There's a Simba one. There's a collection of all of them. You've got, uh, what's his name, Sebastian. This range is really, really pretty. Nina wanted that mark, but it's too big. Yeah, to, to actually carry it. Yeah, that's cute though. They do also have this Dooney and Burke bag, which I believe has recently been released. Walt Disney Disneyland. And then on the front, they've got the beautiful castle. Really nice, really, really lovely. Probably quite expensive. I'm not actually sure what the price is. Just check, this is 270 US dollars. So rather expensive. I find it so funny, like so many people are going crazy over the Disneyland Paris merch. But for us, that's the one thing that we have the privilege of being able to access easily. They have some dolls here. Oh, look at Ariel over there. And I really like, again, just the decor of this shop or marketplace, I should say. It's huge, but it's really cute. This Disney laces collection, I believe, has recently come out. And it's basically Disney shoes in the style of different characters. So for instance, we've got the 
three little pigs. We've got Snow White over here. We've got Peter Pan. Um, oh yeah, Sleeping Beauty. The collection continues here, by the way. They've got a Mickey one. They've got Minnie, the princesses. They've got Stitch. It's such a weird idea, but I do kind of like it at the same time. They have a Disneyland and Walt Disney World range by the looks of it. And you can either get this bumper jacket, which has both logos, which is cool. It's a D for Disneyland. And then the Walt Disney logo here. And then you can also get pins. Happy trading. Greetings. We'd like to thank you in advance for celebrating the 20th anniversary of Disney pin trading with us. So yeah, I think that's why they're doing that. Disney pins and this, both of the castles. Or maybe, I don't know. This is meant to be, I think, just Disney World's castle. Quite like this cap. I like what they've done with the W and the D. I just wish it had something on the back. It doesn't, sadly. So far, I'll be honest, I haven't actually seen anything that I love, love, love or feel like I absolutely have to buy. They do have a couple of other shops, by the way. So this isn't the only shop. This is just one of the shops. I think one of the bigger ones. But yeah, every shop will have different things. I think they've got like D23 spirit jerseys, which Moni really wants to get. So yeah, the spirit jerseys and like outfits, D23 specific merchandise is what both of us are interested in mainly. And I think that might be one of the other shops, but yeah, pretty cool to see what this shop looks like anyway. This has a bit of everything by the looks of it. Look at this one, D23. Oh, that's cute. That is actually really cute. Unicorn. That's exactly what you've been saying the whole time. That's amazing, that's amazing. And it's especially D23. Yeah, and it's embroidered, which is good quality, yeah. you know? Really nice, well done. There's some Mr. Toad merch as well to celebrate Mr. Toad's 75th anniversary. Well, the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, to be more precise. And they have some ears. I'm not the biggest Mr. Toad fan personally, but if anybody is, look at the ears. And it does say 49 on them. You can get these figurines as well. Um, bumper jackets, a full-on lounge fly bag. There's a lot going on. It's a little bit later. We have just arrived at the Honda Center where the evening panels are going to be happening. Like the most popular, the biggest, the most important, the most anticipated ones are going to be happening here for the first time this year at the Honda Center, which is like a stadium. Normally, I think they said they do rugby, some kind of American sport in here, but obviously for the next three nights, it's going to be D23, which is very, very exciting. We got an Uber from the Marriott Hotel where we're staying at. It cost about $17, $18 because it was during rush hour. A lot of people were coming to this area. There was a bit of traffic as well, so overall it took us about 15 minutes, 1-5. Not bad. Without traffic, it will probably take like seven, six, seven minutes maximum. But obviously, it's a time when everybody's trying to come here. But we just entered the Honda Center. You can see it over there. And Moni and I are sitting in different locations of the stadium. So she's already gone to find her seat. But I wanted to show you these as well. As soon as we entered the lobby area, I guess, of the Honda Center, they gave us a couple of things. One of them says, do not open. And the staff members that gave it to us said that we just have to wait until at a certain point during the performance, the show, the panel tonight, they will let us know that we can open it. Very intrigued about this. And then also these bracelets which Moni said apparently Taylor Swift uses or has been using in her recent Eras tour. I'm not a Taylor Swift fan by any means. I mean I don't mind her music but I don't necessarily follow the girl. I don't really know much about her so I don't really know what it is. But it's um, obviously D23 bracelet and I'm guessing this is going to do something as well during the show and this is where obviously we got them given to us. But yeah this is normally like I said a sports stadium. People would come here for sports, games, things like that. So it's a big space and the reason they decided to bring some of the most important and you know anticipated panels here is so that they could accommodate more people because every year people have been disappointed about not being able to get into the biggest panels. Hopefully with putting them here they've been able to accommodate more people. Now I'm spotting a D23 merch shop here. <laughs> this is fun like D23 stuff that you would normally see at a concert that is actually really fun like light up things, light up ears, they've got little necklaces, things like that. Just wanted to show you the ears that they have here, Mickey Mouse Glow ears. They have the D23, the ultimate Disney fan event on them, uh, Fantasia and Mickey as well. Very cute. May have to purchase them later on, we'll see. But for now, I think I'm going to go and find my seat as well. I'm in the 221 section, I think. So I think I'm one level lower than money, I think. So I'm in my seat, row K, on an aisle seat as well, which is very nice and convenient. So excuse my look, I am tired. I've been up all day, obviously. Didn't get much sleep last night, so don't look my best. It's okay, we're here for a fun time. But yeah, I feel like I'm about to watch a concert. Here we go. Oh, they're doing a little <laughs> fashion runway situation. Also, I did put my um, bracelet on as well. 
which I think is going to light up at some point. Hopefully you guys can hear me. It is very loud in here. But yeah, in the next 10 minutes, the show should start. I think Moni is also somewhere on this side. This may be one level up, just like in the smaller section. In that bracelet, if you didn't do so already, there is a pull tab. Oh. Now is your opportunity. Pull the tab. Everybody. Pull the tag, okay. Yes. It's time to That's do it. Right. I have to say, the panel hasn't even officially started yet, but the Keep atmosphere it, is Give it up for our crew. so Stop. good. Sasha! Woo! Oh, it feels like we're in a Westlife concert. This is hilarious. Oh my God. Okay, let me do this. Are you ready to hit that track? Let's hit that track, y'all! special connection that Disney has with our fans. Your energy and enthusiasm fuels us. We have a lot to be proud of and even more to look forward to, and that includes tonight's showcase from Disney Entertainment. And so with that, let's get things started, right? Yeah. studio is that we're in business with great people telling fun, exciting stories with incredible characters. Disney legend, Jim Cameron. team's been working on for over 18 years. Wow. Hello, D23, I'm Pete Doctor, and I am... Oh, wow. I am absolutely delighted to be here. In fact, you might say I'm D23 lighted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is D23 and we open with <laughs> We are so proud that this film has connected with so many people. And uh, if you love the film as much as we do, I've got some great news. Emotions will be in the air for a little while, 
Aww. as we are excited to announce a brand new Disney Plus series inspired by the world of Inside Out okay. called Dream Productions. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. But this is our first original series and we wanted to do something unique and bold, something unlike anything we've done before and we think you're going to love it. It's going to be streaming exclusively on Disney Plus December 6th. And quickly realizes he's way out of his league. And it's here where Elio meets aliens of all shapes and sizes, some large, some small, some just plain old weird. Hmm. He's on an adventure of a lifetime. Woody and all the gang are going to do in Toy Story 5. Yes. I am excited to announce today that writing and directing the film will be none other than Andrew Stanton. Ooh. He's a genius. Please give a game 23 welcome to my pal, Andrew Stanton. Through the experiences of these toys, we've all learned about loyalty and belonging and friendship. And these characters have given us a unique perspective about growing up and navigating life. And in all of the Toy Story films, above anything else, the job of the toys has been to be there for their kids. And with Toy Story 5, the toys' jobs get exponentially harder when our toy crew goes head to head with what kids are obsessed with today, electronics. Oh no! Oh, oh that's brilliant! <laughs> You're all raising... None of you are holding up toys. You're all holding up phones. Let's be real. Toys have some serious competition these days with That's phones, a really cool idea. tablets, and technology everywhere. And so this time around, it's Toy Meets Tech. <laughs> hey, 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 Jason Bateman. Hello, D23! I am so happy to be here with you today. The bunny is back. reveal we will be meeting some new members of the animal kingdom because as you can see Zootopia 2 is bringing reptiles. Ooh. Well someone just as scary especially now that he's won an Oscar. Playing there is the one and only Ki Hui Kwa. <laughs> Well, I see Bob Tiger did not appreciate that. From the studio, that brought you Dead Mule and Wolverine. <laughs> Inside Snout 2 and Mufasa. She created Officer of Walt Disney Animation Studios and the director of Frozen and Frozen 2, Jennifer <laughs> Lee. Zootopia 2, you do need to know that our team at Disney Animation is hard at work on some incredible new films. Yes, including an original for 2026. Yes. Yes, and I'm not telling you anything about that today. <laughs> we still have some questions. A lot of questions, actually. <laughs> that is just baseball. <laughs> Now is why we will take two films to answer them. Just a tease, again, just a tease. But I want to take you back a second to where it all began. Do you want to see it? Yeah! Wow! All right, but if you look closely, it captures the scenes of the next epic adventure for Anna and Elsa. And some things might spark, we hope, a few new questions for all of you. We'll premiere on Disney Plus in 2025. Yeah, look at Samantha Box over there. And a stage musical adaptation of her will open in London's West End. Oh, 
Debuts on Disney Plus in March. Please welcome Charlie Cox. You're gonna love what comes next. It's been almost 20 years since Rick introduced the world to three new heroes. You even embraced Mr. Dean, he's basically the worst camp director ever. <laughs> you guys have also made the books a global phenomenon. And when the series was adapted for Disney+, Plus, you enthusiastically embraced us too. Thank you for welcoming me into the Disney family and making Descendants the Rise of Red such a success on Disney+. Plus. All because of you guys! Thank you very much. The movie also premieres on Disney Channel tonight. Yes. I'm rebel and I'm menace and I'm a wonder woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slipping through the shadows like a butcher fighter. Good. Everybody has the envelope. Yes. Yes. Can everybody rip open the envelope? Just rip it open. And inside there's a deck of cards. Ooh. Can you hold it just like I do? Everybody open up the box and take all of the cards out and pour them onto your hand 
face down just okay. like me. You can put the box on the ground, make sure that the box is empty and didn't leave any cards inside of it. A group of cards, a little group of cards, and turn over to a card. Everybody turn over a small pile. If your card is the five of spades and you're matching me, the odds of that is one in 52. Let's say you cut 10 cards, the next time you'll cut 20. In other words, you're gonna cut deeper than you previously did. So everybody, can you cut a little deeper and turn to a new card, okay? Mm. <laughs> All right, everybody put this pile with your new card facing up on top of the pile that's face down in your hand, just like me. Can you show everybody what card you have? <laughs> Oh, oh wait, um, Are you oh, sure you did three it was a three of, no, but, but, hey, if I, no, I'm, I'm saying, uh, no, but I mean, she's holding the card, she's holding the card, <laughs> what I mean is, hold that up so we can see, hold it just like this, I'm saying the queen is holding the card, look at the queen, oh, wow, oh, wow. So see the queen, Wow. Can you all see that? <laughs> see? Wow. Wait, 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 hold on. Not only is the queen holding the three of hearts, but you all took a card that you all hit. Oh my god. If you're holding the three of hearts, can you please hold your card up? and it's all for you guys seriously the only reason we are back here doing this because it's because of your love, love it. the movie. that is why okay. Thank you, fans. next up we have a fresh look at a beloved classic please make a lot of noise for the stars of disney snow white rachel zegler and gal Any young person, any little girl, if you get to put on a Disney princess dress and be her for a day, let alone six months of shooting <laughs> in London on these incredible sets in a Sandy Powell design dress, yes. it's just been the most amazing experience and I can't wait to share it with you all. We never thought that we would have this legacy, you know, that uh, has continued on all these years. And uh, here we are, and uh, what a beautiful time to bring this movie back, you know, Technology and AI. In a mile, from the day of my promise to me. for having me here today. Uh, like all of you, The Lion King made an indelible mark on me. I still remember seeing the film for the first time. Mufasa will feature music throughout. Can you tell us about that? Uh, absolutely. The music for Mufasa is written by none other than the incredible, the great Lin-Manuel Miranda. <laughs> Screenplay to Mufasa, I was in the middle of writing a counter. I had not figured out how the magical family was going to get out of this one. But I, I read the screenplay.
play, and I just, you know, you think you know Mufasa, you think you know Scar, but I had no idea, and I just, I could see where the songs went, and it was just such a joy to be uh, in the service of one of our great directors, so I'm just thrilled to be here and mm -hmm. supporting the work. Now, we gave you all, we gave all of you uh, here at D23 an exclusive look, uh, at a scene, but I also want you all to be the first audience, the first, uh, no audience has ever seen this, the first audience to see our brand new trailer before it goes out into the world later tonight. So please join all of us in checking out our D23 exclusive first look at our new trailer. Thank you, D23! auditorium and I did just have to get myself a pair of ears the D23 the ultimate Disney fan event 2024 light up ears that they're using here at the Hunter Center Molly actually sent me a photo and she got it she bought this as well just before the performance the panel and I told her I was gonna buy it as well but I decided to buy it afterwards so we both got them that was amazing though I really enjoyed just being among so many Disney fans I think today has felt a little bit surreal to me it hasn't sunk in yet I've been wanting to come to D23 for so long and even though I really wanted to come and I was excited I was also a little bit stressed you can ask money you can ask all my friends you can ask all my followers I was a little bit stressed about coming here you know I knew it would be very busy loads of lines loads of waiting things going wrong however even though yes there were lines and yes I had to wait in line for a long long time for many things I've had an amazing time as a Disney fan I feel like this really is the ultimate event for you to come to I, like I said, I already want to come back. Like, Moni and I, when we booked this trip, we thought it was going to be like a once in a lifetime thing, or at least once in a who knows how long. Like, maybe we'll do it this year, and then maybe in like 10 years' time, 20 years' time, one day we'll come back for these 23. But we both said that we would like to come back sooner rather than later. So, it's been amazing. This is only the first day, though, so make sure you subscribe to my channel. There'll be plenty more videos coming. Tomorrow's a big day. Obviously, Disneyland Paris will most likely be announcing their third land in Walt Disney Studios slash Disney Adventure World, which. You know, the way the event ended tonight with um, the Lion King, I think, just think about this. <laughs> it's going to be the Lion King, let's be real. But anyway, once everything is announced officially, I'm excited to share it with you on Instagram as well. Make sure you follow me on there. I've had an amazing day. I'm so tired and I'm going to be up editing things, reels for Instagram, photos, things like that. So I'm probably not going to be getting much sleep this weekend, but I'm so happy to be here. I'm very, very excited. I feel very grateful. I want to give a massive shout out and huge thank you to my lovely Patreon members and my YouTube members. I'm going to love you and leave you now though. Get back to the hotel. We're probably going to have to get a Uber and I think it's going to be quite busy and difficult right now because everyone's trying to get out but i'm going to see you in the next video make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it bye bye hang on i'm still here i did also just want to say a huge huge thank you to any of you who came up to say hi to me today i cannot believe that there are some of you that are watching me from here from california some of you are locals here to Disneyland, california some of you are from all over the world but it's been just so so overwhelmingly incredible and i really appreciate your support i love you know connecting with you i love meeting you in person so thank you so so much anyway i'm gonna love you and leave you now i'll see you in the next one